Okay, for this video, we're going to create a box plot, or also known as a box and whisker plot, and also the five number summary by hand, just in case you're not able to use graphing technology to help you out. Um, so what we are, have here is um, a data set that represents the ages of 15 college professors. It is given to us unordered, and in order for us to come up with the five number summary first and to create the box plot, um, we have to put it in order. So we would start with our smallest, which is 28. And we want to go from smallest to largest. So 28 would be first, followed by 30, 37, 40, 42, 46, 51, 55, 56, and I had already gone through and organized this in order, um, but all I'm doing is going through and finding smallest to largest and simply putting them in order. And then 68 is our oldest. So that's your first step. First step is to put it in order. After you have put it in order, you want to find um, the five number summary, if you remember. Let me give myself enough room. So the five number summary is made up of the minimum, the first quartile, the median or Q2, Um, the third quartile, which is Q3, and the maximum. So if it asks you for the five number summary, that's what they're looking for. The minimum is your lowest data point, your maximum is your highest, the median is the very middle number, and then Q1 is basically the median of the lower half, and Q3 is the median of the upper half. So the minimum and the maximum are easy to find. The minimum is simply going to be our lowest value. So this is going to be our minimum. And our maximum is just going to be our highest value. So those are easy to find. Our minimum is 28. Our maximum is 68. Q, the median would be the next thing that we want to find since we have 15 data points and that is odd it's going to be the very middle number so I'm going to count in and find the eighth term um, so one two three four five six seven and then the eighth term is going to be our Q2 or median so I also have seven above one two three four five six seven remember if this was even we would find the average of the middle two numbers so the median or Q2 is going to be 55. And now what we're going to do is we're going to find for Q1, we're going to find the median of the lower half. So our lower half would be these values right here. We ignore the actual Q2. So we're just looking at this set. And so we would find the median of this. So since there's seven numbers, again, it's odd. It's just going to be the very middle number, which is 40. Um, had we had an even number of values below this, uh, then we would have found the average of the middle two numbers. So our Q1 would be 40. And then Q3 is just going to be the median of the upper half. So the upper half is all values that are above the median. So again, we have seven values above. So since it's an odd number, it's just simply going to be the middle number. So this would be Q1, and this would be Q3. Now, if you're able to use a graphing calculator, your graphing calculator, just by putting the data in, it does do all of this, um, even though it doesn't show the work. When you look for the summary, um, it will give you all of these values. But what it did was it put it in order, and then the median is always going to be the um, middle of the data set. If it's an even number, remember it's the average of the two middle numbers. If it's an odd number, then it's just the very middle number. And then Q1 and Q3, Q1 is the median of the lower half and Q3 is the median of the upper half. 
So our next step, and depending upon the text that you are using or the level of statistics that you are in, um, some textbooks do not separate out outliers. Um, other textbooks do separate out outliers. And in order to determine if there are outliers, so if you're looking to see are there any values that just don't fit, the way that you would tell is you would take your Q1 for the lower outlier, we would do Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR, and I'll discuss that in just a second. And then for the upper outliers, we would take Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. The IQR So the IQR stands for the interquartile range, which is where the I, the Q, and the R came from. And in order to find this, you would simply do Q3 minus Q1. So in this case, we would take Q3, which is 60, minus 40, which is equal to 20. So that's what we would plug in here to see if it works out. So our Q1, rem remember, is 40. So we would do 40 minus 1.5 times 20. And 1.5 times 20 happens to be 30. So this is really 40 minus 30, which is 10. So in order to be an outlier, the professor would have to be under the age of 10, which we don't have. So we have no lower outliers. For the upper outlier, we would do the same thing. We would take our Q3, which is 60, and we would take 1.5 times 20, um, which is again 60 plus 30 which gives us 90. So at the upper end, in order to have an outlier at the upper end, we would have to have a professor that's over the age of 90. Since we don't have either of this, there are no outliers in this set. Um, I will do another video that references how to draw the box plot when there is outliers. Um, I have already done them with um, calculator videos to show you with um, the outliers and without. Um, but for this one, since there are no outliers, we don't have to deal with that. So what we would do in order to create the box and whisker plot is we use the five number summary. So the five number summary, we would draw a number line and you always want to include a scale and a title. So this is going to be ages of professors because that is what our um, data set dealt with. And then we would start with our low end, which is, or we would start um, with a value that is of the low end. So since 28 was our lowest, I'm going to start at 25, and I'm just going to count by fives. You can pick your scale. I could have counted by tens. I could count by ones if I wanted to. Um, but five just seems like a reasonable number from going from 28 to 68. And it's very, very important that you include the scale because if you do not, then people looking at it do not know how to interpret your information. So when we create our box plot by hand, we would simply start with our minimum value. We'd put a dot at our minimum value, which is 28. And we also will put a dot at our upper value, which is 68. Okay. Um, we will put a line at Q1. So at 40, we would put a line. At um, Q2, we would also put a line, and we're going to draw a box that goes between Q1 and the median. And then we're going to do the same thing for Q3. We're going to put a box here, and this is why it's known as a box and whisker plot or a box plot, because we're putting a box around our interquartile range. And then we would draw our tails, so those are considered the whiskers. So again, all you have to do is minimum Q1, um, median or Q2, Q3, and the maximum. So from this, if you recall what the median is, that this would tell us that 50% of our professors are over the age of 55. 50% um, of our professors are under the age of 55, and they fall between the ages of 28 to 55. With this, you can't look at the actual area because looking at the area, this looks like a larger area. That's just the range. Um, so our 
in between Q1 and Q2, we have 25% of our data falls in here. It's just a larger range than this part. It's not saying that based on the size that more fall in here. Um, we could say that 25% um, of our professors fall between the ages of 55 and 60. 25% fall between the ages of 60 and 68. 25% um, fall between the ages of 28 and 40. So if you recall, um, it's quartiles means 25% or the 25th percentile. Um, so you could look at this information. Like if it asks you a question, um, how many professors, what is the percentage of professors that are over the age of 40? You could say 75% because we have 25% down here. So there's a lot of information that you can um, gain from here. It does not preserve all of the individual data values. You do lose that when you are dealing with a box and whisker plot. You, can't, you just know that 25% fall between these ages. So as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please make sure you let me know.